Today we're looking at the small thermal camera from Tooltop, the Tooltop ET692A. Here we go. Thanks Tooltop for sending it in for this review. It's amazing just how advanced tech is getting these days. I love it. What a great time we are living in. Here's a great example of that thermal imaging camera, which, you know, not so long ago would cost thousands upon thousands of dollars. Instead, we're looking at a tool top ET692A that goes for around a hundred bucks. Yes, around a hundred bucks, maybe even cheaper on sale. Oh. And as you can see, it is a small thermal camera. Not much bigger than my hand, really. In fact, if I put it on my hand, yeah, it fits in the palm of my hand. It doesn't get much smaller than that, uh, you know, for a handheld. Yeah, they have the ones you plug into your phone, but we're talking a handheld unit here. Awesome. In the box, what do you get? Well, you get your little two-top infrared thermal camera instruction manual. Very, very basic here, because this is a very basic thermal imaging camera. And as well, you get a little carry strap. So, you know, that's handy, especially for small test instruments. Always nice to have them wrapped around your hand. Hey, I've got a 35 millimeter camera and I prefer a wrist strap as opposed to a neck strap. It just makes it so much easier. But yeah, that's what you get in the box. And by the way, it's a good looking box. Nice, verbose, tells you exactly what you're getting. And oh yeah, nice. Great styrofoam packaging inserts. So your camera is gonna arrive in a one condition. Take a look at those camera specs. Temperature range from minus 20 to 300 degrees Celsius. Oh, you could probably take this to Mars at that rate. Minus four to minus 572 Fahrenheit. Measuring accuracy is plus or minus uh, 2% or plus or m minus two degrees Celsius. So fairly accurate temperature wise, not a lot of variation going on. As always ships with that nice protective Mylar cover. So let's just take that off. Oh, look at that. Beauty. In terms of operations, doesn't get any easier. We have our pallet mode, image, and temperature Celsius or Fahrenheit, as well as the on-off button. That is it. Turn it on, simply hold down on the power button, like so. Unit turns on in about a second. Version 23, 11, 21, so that's when the light is firmer update, November of last year, so fairly recent thermal imaging firmware. And there we go. We are here. We are booting on the top of the temperature, temp battery life, and the temperature mode we're in, in this case, Celsius. Now, take note, this is a very basic thermal camera. Uh, that's why it's so cheap as well. Um, you're getting good tech, but you're also getting the basics here. So uh, you cannot take movies, for instance, videos. All you're going to be able to do with this is snap that thermal image, and it will save it to the unit also, itself. Also, this one does not have a tripod mount, so you'll be relegated to either carrying this or, you know, putting it down in a shoebox. I don't know. But yeah, we don't have that tripod mount, which sometimes is handy, but hey, yeah, what can we say? To charge the unit, at the very top we have a micro USB slot with the included micro USB cable goes right in there. Charging time takes not long, about 45 minutes to get a full charge. To gain access to the battery housing, just simply pull down on the battery handle. itself is an 18500 battery. So 18500 to charge uh, takes about 45 minutes to get to a full charge. So it's not an 18650, a little bit more um, probably difficult to source, but not really. This one's rated at 1400 milliamp hours, 3.75 volts, 3.7 volts rather. All right, so I'm doing a little bit of sliced and dicing on that Bamboo Mini 3D printer. And uh, yeah, look at that. We've got the thermal camera out taking a look at how hot that uh, bed is getting. And you can see it's getting pretty hot. Set right now for 65 uh, degrees on the 3D printer itself. And if you take a look, it is spot on with the camera. Now don't forget, we're getting a general uh, temperature ra rating there. Um, minimum and maximum, maximum coming in at, it's showing us around 58, 59 degrees. As well, we can switch to Fahrenheit, same thing. Now, what I do like about this as well is, depending on what you're looking at, you can get a pretty good idea um, of the thermal quality just from the size of the screen. So for most 
um, subjects, it, it's it's pretty good. Here we've got two imaging molds. We've got your standard thermal imaging mode, and we have basically like chromatic uh, black and white. I do prefer the standard imaging. It just seems to, uh, yeah, it just works for me. But hey, it's nice to know you've got that feature even on such a low cost thermal camera. All in all, a lot of fun to use. And I'm telling you, this thing is just so light in the hand. It's like crazy. You don't even feel like you're carrying a camera. Here, I'm taking a look at the uh, pot light. And uh, yeah, you know, what can I say? Now in the furnace room, this is where things get interesting. And this is where we have a, a little more noise on that display, as you can see. So right now I'm looking at a, a hot water tank and uh, the cooling pipes, the hot water pipes, what have you. So yeah, you can make out the image, you can make out the pipes, but it does take a little bit of getting used to, and it's certainly uh, not super, super sharp as uh, some of the more expensive cameras out there. But let's not forget, we're talking about a hundred bucks here, even less. Uh, so yeah, it, it's hard to complain. And yeah, in case you're wondering, you can use the thermal camera while you're charging the battery. Cool. Images, your only access is via the image button. That's it, that's all. Um, you cannot view them offline. Uh, to get to the next page, you press the Celsius and Fahrenheit key, and it will scroll through all of the different images that you've taken. But yeah, there is no way to uh, store those images, uh, say in a folder on your computer or what have you, no computer interaction interface whatsoever. So that is the downside to this. Everything is done locally. Uh, on the camera itself. If you want to delete images as well, the product does not support deleting single images. The only way to do a mass delete is to reset to factory settings. That's another thing which is a bit of a, you know, quirk, I'd say. At least I should be able to delete those images after I've taken them, right? <clears throat> Hold down on the trigger key, like so. Press the power on button. Keep your finger on that trigger key. And that's it. Right now it's restoring factory defaults. It doesn't tell you that, but it is. If you go to cycle through images, we don't have any anymore. Closing thoughts on the two top professional thermal camera, the Tiny ET692A. Oh, I have mixed reservations. Yes, it is an inexpensive way to get into thermal imaging. The only caveat is the fact that the resolution on this camera is so-so. I find it really depends on what you're taking a thermal image of. That being said, the fact that you can't view those images offline on your computer, what have you, and you can't even delete them unless you do a factory reset, oh, that kind of hurts. End of the day though, if you're looking for a basic thermal camera to do some basic thermal imaging, you know what? It's pretty hard to go wrong when you're paying less than a hundred bucks. The Tooltop ET692A gets three out of five stars. Yeah, it was a hard one for me, but you know, just the fact that it is inexpensive and it actually is very well made. Ah, uh, you know, I gave it that extra half star. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Lots more coming up in April. Till the next one. Yeah, you know. Keep on testing.